Everybody, welcome. We are here. The Triple Option X's and Knowles boys brought to you by Knowles 24-7. Spring football is over, but oh my goodness, ladies and gents, the content has just begun. Because today we are going to start. We're going to do a post-spring report card. We're going to be doing this on a number of players. We're also going to be having a number of different video topics. So as always, subscribe to the Knowles 24-7 YouTube channel. Subscribe to the X's and Knowles YouTube channel. Bing! Put the notifications on and get ready to have your face melted off by great football infotainment. Yes, it's true. Ark of the Covenant style. Listen, <laughs> today we're talking about the gang of the spring official. It was on Brandon Sedone's article. It's done, written in stone. We're talking about Kentron Portier. We are going to be doing a post spring report card on him, guys. Kevin and Adam first. How you guys doing? Doing great. Good. It's uh, it, I'm I'm giving full credit to this to Zach though because this was Zach's guy all spring. So sorry, right, Brendan, well, you don't get any credit. Yeah, Brendan was really pushing for Rodney Hill. Portier mm. pulled it out in the spring game. Wah, wah, wah. Uh, sorry, <laughs> listen, the boys have spoken, and I can just humbly agree with them. We're talking about Zach's guy, Kintron Portier, a guy who has been a really, really I think embodies that king of the spring mentality. Showed a lot of flashes last year. Games like the Florida game come to mind. Very fun celebration, but really looked great in spring, particularly during the spring game. Tough catches, good catch radius. A guy that has really established himself at the top of that wide receiver rotation. Kevin, what did you think about Kentron's development? You got to see him at practice before we dive into the film. Yeah, Tron, I think you kind of always know what you've had with him. Um, he's a big body. He has good body control. Um, I think route running is something that he's had to develop over time, um, kind of refining the edges. I think he is a, he's a guy that, remind me if I, I'm right, but I, I think he's a guy that came into football a little bit later. Mm -hmm. um, he's a basketball kid through high school. So you, you see the body control, you see the athleticism. It's just the finer points of wide receiver play. So I think to us, he's always stood out in these spring games and these practices because the athleticism shines. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to a game situation, you want a guy that can run clean routes. You want a guy that can get separation. And I think you're starting to see that more and more as time goes on. And um, I mean, you saw flashes. You saw him catching, you know, those back shoulder fades that he became kind of sort of famous with with Tate. Mm -hmm. um, but now he's adding more to his game. And, you know, it's really opening him up to kind of be more of a, of a future guy. Well said, Adam. What do you think? I mean, I think this is a very positive thing. There's been very few instances that I can think of during the Norvell tenure where players have gotten worse since they've gotten on mm -hmm. campus. This is this is a highlight. This is a highlight of the Norvell development. And shout out to the Donk himself. <laughs> yeah, he's Kentron's come a long way. So yeah, he he was a big, he was a basketball guy. Kind of got into football late. Came to Florida State. It was always uh, the flashes were there of his potential. Um, Kev mentioned, uh, as Kev ha has to in every video, get a Tate mentioned in there. <laughs> Checked um, it off your box there, Kev. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> uh, a lot of the back shoulder throws, you could see the body control and things like that, but he's learning the nuances of playing wide receiver. He's starting to develop or he's starting to understand how to use his body to create space and make catches. Um, I don't think he's a great separator when it comes yeah. to running routes, but he does use his body, uses his physicality. He uses that range with his catch radius to make plays on the football. Um, I mean, not only the amazing one-handed catch he had, but he also had the had the uh, long touchdown deep in the in the down the left side that he made. It just he's starting to understand what being a wide receiver is, and on top of all that, he blocks his ass off, which is really nice. We like that here. And Adam, you've mentioned your perimeter blocking on your checklist. So guys, we've hit everything we need to hit. Let's watch the film. Yeah, let's see if uh, AB's claims actually come to pass when we look at the film in depth. Or if Where's he's our just, guy at? Top of the screen? Up to the top of the screen. Top yeah. of the screen. So these are all the... I, what I did was I grabbed all the plays from the spring game that he was even tangentially involved in. Um, so some of them might be just him sprinting off screen. Don't even know what that word means. Well, you don't have to say, okay, look, nice extension of the arms there. Offensive tackle like. Yeah, I mean, he's, you see his length. Uh, I mean, we, that you talk about it with an offensive tackle. Often the longer person wins. That's why you're looking for these taller and taller offensive tackles. He's going to win that battle against a corner nine times out of ten. 
do I really have to go a whole video where I have to just watch a wide receiver? <laughs> you can do it, bud. You can do it. It will, it will reward you. Okay, so here he is. He's running a drag route. What do you see here, AB? Yeah, he delayed his release. Mm. I mean, he's yeah. run a little shallow across here. I think this is kind of what you were talking about, where he's not necessarily going to be the best separator. Mm -hmm. Right? He's not going to just beat you necessarily one-on-one. Yeah. -on -one. yeah, I mean, he's not... He's not going to run full four speed. He's a strider as a runner. Um, he, he's not going to blow you away with his speed. So he he's got to he's got to learn the nuances of the position that are going to help him uh, get separation. How to set how to set routes up. You see him there. He's trying to he, he, be able to go back. He's setting up the inside here, trying to set the inside up. Gives an inside fake. The corner, I believe, that might be a. It looks like AZ. Uh, doesn't go for it, stays on the outside, but yeah, AZ does a good job here. Yeah, they, so these are these are the nuances. Trying to set up, trying to set these set DBs up, get their hips open, and those kinds of things. Um, different releases to help him uh, find space as a wide receiver didn't work there, but doesn't mean it won't work later. Yeah, see, you see, kind of what they're trying to get out of him here, which is just. I mean, more often than not, he's he's mm -hmm. gonna be he's gonna be a sideline threat. Go down the field, yeah. Try to get those that stride length going. Yeah, use that big physical body. Throw the back shoulder fade to him. Let him use his body control. Come back to him on some other stuff. So this is kind of where I see his growth. Uh, this is kind of where you you didn't see him before. So he's gonna get inside the inside release uh, on Fintrell here. So the defense is in some kind of, you know, man match cover four uh, that essentially plays very similarly to a cover two man um, where he's going to get in here and make this in cut. And he has a very small window between the safety coming in and this corner. The corner is kind of supposed to give up a little bit of the inside. He's supposed to play outside in, um, but he does a good job getting off the route initially there, getting that inside leverage. And using his big body to make a catch over the middle. Yep. Boxes him out. And that's going to be really needed this year with the loss of Micah Pittman. So that's a very promising development. Yeah, totally. He's he's you need that physical presence. Uh, I think that's instrumental. You, we've seen a lot of finesse catches out of him. Not a lot of physical catches over the middle. And, and it's good to see that come along. Yeah, I remember early in his career, he was a guy they ran a lot of slants with and he Good blocking, Adam. Uh, alligator armed a little bit in uh, when he went across the middle. There, he, he took that and took a shot, too. Good blocking alert, baby. <laughs> He's very versatile, too, as far as where he can light him out. Light him out wide, light him out that kind of like that nub right off, the, right off the line of scrimmage. Very physical. Like, he's a lot of tools there. Very well-rounded. Yeah, this makes it really hard for a defense because, I mean, you can see that Cypress is kind of outmatched here. I mean, it's just a bigger body wide receiver on him, kind of like what you get out of Johnny Wilson. So do you, do you put a safety on him where there's a clear mismatch in the receiving game, or do you keep a corner on him and let, let FSU run on you outside here? It's kind of nice. It's not, I would, I won't say it's like having two Johnny Wilson's when Johnny comes back, but it's like having, I don't know, like a, I don't know, zero calorie Johnny Wilson next to your real Johnny Wilson. That's pretty out of that. Now that's that's a hundred percent real, like unleaded, regular Johnny Wilson. <laughs> it's nice to have. So here he's trying to get an outside release. He can't even I mean he can't get off this off this coverage, off this jam. This dude, I don't know who the DB is, but he's way over playing the outside release. Yeah, that's he's nice. really trying to make sure that Tron can't release outside. Yeah, and you'd like to see Trod give him something there to think about. Um, you know, yeah. again, talked about learning the nuances of the position. Get his try to get his hips turned to the inside. Try to get him stepping inside so you can get back outside. Give him something to think about. Right. Give a little. What you see a lot of these receivers doing nowadays is they put they kind of get both feet down at once, mm -hmm. and then they make a move. So they kind of start from a more neutral yeah, position that. and then kind of give pat, a head pat. Pat. I'm with you. Yeah, this, this wasn't a very um, pretty route, but he makes a great catch. So that's, that's a great point that kind of illustrates what you guys are saying. 
an extremely impressive play. Room to improve still. Not a finished product. Yeah, his Great route running has come along, but it's not quite there. The catch is just su- it's super impressive. I mean, you can't. No. That's a high level play. Oh, again. So this is obviously what we know he does great. High point the football. What happened? Here we go. You can't see anything, but ACC network. Thanks for being so you see the important bit. <laughs> yeah, he's just running a little corner route. He jumps over a safety yeah. to catch it. Right. That's what and I was He just uses earlier. his big body to always be between. The football and the defender. And then later in the same drive, it's the same route. He's going to run a corner route deep in the end zone. A little uh, smash concept. I wonder if he give, gives him a move. I guess it look, not. It's hard, it looks like you he's, can't see. Yeah. Oh, I think Q Jones might have messed up. It's hard to tell if Q Jones is supposed it's hard to tell yeah. if they're in a true cover two kind of deal or if they're in a cover four. If they're in cover four, then Q Jones definitely messed up. If they're in cover two, then he's probably supposed to be where he's supposed to be. Not going to be fun for opposing defensive coordinators when Kentron mm-hmm. Portier is the head of that kind of bunch, kind of that bunch spear, right? Yeah. Well, you're given double tight looks. I mean, you really, you put Johnny Wilson on the other side there, you, you've, Essentially, got four tight end body tight bodies on the field. <laughs> and you got Morlock out there with Jaheim Bell, and then if you had Johnny and Kendron, it's a lot of size. Good luck matching up with that because you get into a situation Kev talked about earlier. You go with you go with your base personnel. You go with <laughs> yeah. A, what do you do, you man? Go with a nickel look. You go with a dime look. I mean, what do you what are you going to do? Not really much to see here. He's kind of, I, I guess he's at the top of the screen. Good hit downfield. Yeah. But I mean, we came away from this game kind of saying there's some, con- you know, there's a little bit of concern about perimeter blocking. And he's not, not a from him. Not yeah, from he's him. He's not a concern. Yeah. That's just, he's just running a hitch here. Oh, biscuit. Yeah. There you go, Adam. <laughs> Are you comfortable with him as wide receiver, too? Well, I, I, mm-hmm. yeah. is that where he's going to be? Isn't he like, doesn't he spell Johnny Wilson? Don't they technically play the same all? I mean, I know it's going to be a mishmash, but like are Wilson and Portier going to be on the field a lot. You think together? Yeah, I don't see why not. I mean, it depends. It's going to depend on what package you're in. Right. I mean, we think they're going to be in a lot of 12 personnel. Uh, that's one running back and two tight ends. Um, I, I'll tell you what, Adam. A lot of people were kind of penciling and maybe Malik McLean for that other outside guy for this year. I feel like if I had to choose between them both, I'm taking Kintron all day. I think. Yeah, I tend to agree with you. So, yeah, I, I feel comfortable. Yeah, I do feel comfortable about it. I think he does a lot of the little, uh, the things that are more important to this offense well, like blocking on the outside. I mean, here, I'm, this is just another thing. Uh, Another play where he blocks downfield when he sees a running back coming towards him. Oh, just finishing the play. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. I mean, he makes it look easy. He just kind of box. He just gets this guy. He's got the length, and he does what he's supposed to do. He doesn't <laughs> have the ball to do hand. another guy. I mean, that is a walk-on or whatever. But, dude, I, uh, the effort, the effort against that squad during the spring game, it shows. Yeah, and this I is think the so. last play we have. He's just running a little hitch. He's wide open. Bottom. Wide open. What are you doing, Duff? Duff man. Mr. Reed. <laughs> um, all right. I I mean, he was the guy that really stood out, him and like Rodney mm-hmm. Hill during that spring game, but I liked watching the unheralded plays because I feel even better about him after watching that. Still some things to clean up with the route running, different ways to get separation. He still got some more time in the lab, more time to cook, but guys. What a development. So this is yeah. a this is a post spring report card. So let me just put you on the spot. What are we gonna do? Are we gonna well he is the king of the spring? What's the grade you're giving him? Adam, hmm. go first. Um I'd be curious to hear Kev's because Kev obviously got to see him through, through practice. I mean, based on the game itself, I mean, I, I think you gotta give him like a B plus type of deal. Um, I think it's tough to say, hey, you know, you can't be getting even though he made a great catch, you can't be getting jammed by walk-ons. Um, so 
I think that's worth a, a ding in and of itself. But he obviously made a couple of really good plays, the touchdown, the great catch. His effort's always there. Um, it's tough to know whether he's – it's tough for me to know sitting here watching this, whether he's doing what he's supposed to be doing at all times, but nothing looked egregious. Um, so you know, I think a B-plus is pretty fair, and I feel pretty comfortable going into next season with him if he's your you know, number two wide receiver. Right, other outside presence. Right. Have you were there. Boots on the ground. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I would – I was thinking a minus before you said B plus just because of the highlight catch uh, over the over the course of the spring. I probably would have given him a, a B plus. I think he's shown you a lot of what you've always seen. I think you're seeing a little bit more of that separation and ability over the middle. But yeah, I still think before he's a wide receiver number one, which I think he definitely has the potential to be. You need to see that. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but I, I think he's someone that you're stoked about being able to to throw out there. I mean. In terms of wide receiver one, wide receiver two, I mean, you still might be getting Micah Pittman back before the season starts mm-hmm. or early on in the season. Ja'Kai Douglas is someone that I think offers a different kind of look than you might see out of Johnny Wilson and um, Kentron Portier. But I yeah, I think you're happy with what he gives you, and I think that this is a team that wants to run the ball and wants to be physical. And when you have so many different big bodies you can throw out there that can also be receiving threats... I think that's exactly what Norvell wants to do. And so I, I think he fits the scheme. I think there's a reason why they kind of let McLean walk and they wanted to hold on to Portier. And I think it's because he fits that kind of hard-nosed football style more for them. So yeah. I, I think he showed you what he needed to show you to feel comfortable playing him a significant amount in the fall. What's your grade? <laughs> I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go A minus for the spring game. Fantastic. I'm with you. I think I'm going to go lean more on the A minus side. I tend to agree with Adam as far as like he's not he's not a finished product yet, but I'm going to go for an A minus for me just because he looked better than I thought he was going to look this spring. And I like the trajectory. Could some of that be because Johnny Wilson wasn't out there? How much of that stuff we see during the spring game, not against walk ons and when Johnny's on the team? How many of those opportunities are Kentron's going to get? But for a game where we kind of decried the perimeter blocking, um, I thought he looked good. So I'm going an A- minus just for the progression. Guys, that's our first post-spring report card. I'm not going to give you who we're going to talk about in the next video, but Adam's very excited. So let's get there, put the notifications on. We're going to be doing some post-spring report cards. We're going to talk about some other stuff. Just thank you for everything. Subscribe to Knowles 24-7 if you haven't. The recruiting, the transfer portal right now is absolutely nuts. Just uh, just get in. Be, tap in. Just tap in and get all of the news that you need to know as a Florida State fan. It's not a want. It's a need. And we love you guys. Keep chopping on.